Good morning. So <clears throat> I finished reading Indian Black Indians, right? And I think this is also a play on word because he does in his beat first in his first chapter kind of go over uh, the controversy of saying Black Indians versus Indian Black. And I think that that's an, 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 a, maybe a valuable component that you may want to have a discussion about uh, the difference. For some people, most people, I don't think that people care uh, about or, or see the difference between the, the two, but there is a difference. And I read this and I want to first say that this takes me back to childhood because in my childhood days, I would, you know, as you learn more about your heritage, I was open and free in having those discussions with people talking about like how my great grandmother, you know, had you know, was half Cherokee, et cetera, right? And so then it, and then I began to stop wanting to talk about it because people would have those conversations saying that, oh my gosh, everybody's black has some Indian and they come to find out that they may not. And, and they'd say Indian, not Native American. Um, and so I just kind of was like, you know what, I don't want to have these conversations anymore. And so I just kind of don't want to talk about heritage at all. And so reading this book definitely let me begin to kind of explore this <clears throat> component. And there's a sentence where he talks about this new race was beginning and these new race, this new race was forming in conjunction with you know, as people were migrating and moving around because of <clears throat> this whiteness, right? And then it also moves me to look at, there is a fabulous component about Oklahoma. And Oklahoma, uh, it, it, it definitely led me to come to another discussion as to why was Tulsa, you know, why is Tulsa the Black Wall Street? And this gives you a really good framework of Oklahoma and why Tulsa became this Black Wall Street. That was not an accident. It had to deal with uh, the how Oklahoma was formed and it was becoming formed to where um, it was becoming formed as almost like this refuge for the, you know, because Cherokee were forced to move there. Um, something that people do not talk about is the number of slaves that the Cherokee had. Even though they treated their slaves well, they were still slaves. <laughs> and, um, and why did Tulsa, Oklahoma kind of began to end, you know, Oklahoma came into the Union as a, um, a segregated state, and it wasn't without fighting. Let me give a, a line. It says, Europeans seeking to increase their holdings and wealth at the expense of people of color set all economic and legal rules of the game. And that is the biggest, one of the biggest takeaway. And I think one of the, um, the biggest, especially after the Civil War, after the Civil War, white Confederates moved everywhere um, out West and just really spread this notion of whiteness in a way that everyone else had to be then thus inferior. And it was a land grab. It was the ultimate land grab of, that was 
perpetuated by uh, Congress and the president that allowed white men to go and capture whatever land. I mean, if you watch Little House on the Prairie, I mean, that is the document. It really is uh, a level of documenting what was taking place of these land grabs because most of the land grabs out west was, I mean, there were some, there was a lot before uh, the Civil War, but the bulk of it happened post Civil War because they weren't buying it, they were just taking it. And that was part of, anyway. Um, and they just act like people didn't live there or exist there before. Someone that you should know, though, and I think this is so fascinating. Okay, wait, hold on. No, no, no. No. Oh, gosh, where is this? Okay, now you're going to make me look for it. Um... No, I'm not George Henry White. Um, let's see. It is. Ah, McCabe. Edwin McCabe. Edwin P. McCabe. Um, he, and it's so interesting, like Oklahoma's residents, the Blacks within Oklahoma really fought to keep Oklahoma not to become the segregated state. So they had, um, they formed the Equal Rights Association, the Suffrage League, the Afro-American League, the Negro Protective League, and they had all of these protest associations in fact, Edwin McCabe, Edwin P. McCabe, and I'll show you a picture. Edwin P. McCabe became so famous that Kansas City News thought that they were like, look, McCabe is going to be the governor. And this is where threats to his life started because they're like, we're not about to have a black governor. I mean, and I don't know. Anyway, I think something else, something else stood out to me was Hampton Normal and Agricultural Institute. Okay, so Hampton University used to be a normal school, which it actually, and there's remnants of this type of teaching to this day because they still teach etiquette for, for all of their undergrads in their senior year. And Hampton started off as like this institute that was supposed to help them learn how to, um, like practical skills that was supposed, and um, Anderson writes about how Hampton was becoming like these breeding grounds for how do you kind of educate former slaves to become workers in this new in this new emerging post slave economy versus like Howard University was supposed to be teaching people like how to you know think it was based off a liberal arts curriculum Hampton was not and um here's an interesting thing and I and I, the sentence made me sit here because I don't recall reading this in other places where uh Booker T Washington was placed in charge of a project to educate Indians in the ways of white civilization. Booker T. Washington, an ex-slave, <laughs> is supposed to teach Indians 
ways of white civilization. There are so many problems with that sentence. <laughs> like, I can't, I, I, I can't even. This is a quote and I will, and I need to see where this quote comes from. And well, it comes from Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington writes in his Up From Slavery that Washington described his part in this experiment at Hampton Institute from 1879 to 1881, in which he mentored 74 Indians, youth, right? They will like, they were like any other human being, Washington recalled. They were continually planning to do something that would add to my happiness and comfort. And Hampton's black students tried to help the Indians in every possible way. I think I need to buy up for I can't believe I am admitting at the moment that I do not own Up From Slavery by Booker T. Washington. I've read W.B. Du Bois just because I've always identified with W.B. Du Bois. Um, but I have not read up from up from slavery, and I, that that is definitely something I need to go pick up. Uh, anyway, there is someone that I did take note, and I want to spend a little bit of time thinking about this. These two women. Um, I want to show you the picture. Stagecoach Mary Fields, right? She is the second woman to have delivered mail. And I think that's really the second woman in history to deliver mail. And I had to look up Gary Cooper because I was like, who? He's an actor? Hmm. Way before my time. Um, and, they, and Gary Cooper said, Indians never bothered her because she was a Negro. And look at her. Does she look like she's somebody to be bothered with? Mm -mm. She looks like she will kill you. Yes, she does. Okay. Another woman I'm really fascinated with is this, because I haven't heard from her, and she was a feisty woman. Um, and she was African, Native American, and Hispanic. Lucy Gonzalez Parsons. Um, in the book, he really kind of sweeps over her and says that, you know, he, he spends some time on it, but she died in a, in Chicago in a, in a house fire, but uh, it made it seem like she died young. She didn't die young. She died in her 80s. So I was like, okay, so there's a lot of life to live here, and I would love to see you know, more, I want to hear more about her. I looked her up and there's quite a bit out there, but I definitely want to um, explore her story a little bit more. I am definitely interested in this stagecoach Mary Fields. I want to say that this book is definitely a starting point. This is not a uh, um, this is not an authority on anything. This is just an initial moment for you to start reading and researching on your own. So I hope that you enjoy. You could pick up the book. Um, is it worth the read? I mean, there's a few moments here that definitely is worth your while to consider and realizing that even though Native Americans have been extremely killed, um, ex you know, 
land taken from them. I think it's an interesting component. And then also to see the, I think it, it's an interesting component to see how um, they have uh, integrated into the fabric of America in regards to interracial relations. But on the other hand, I think it's also daunting and it is a little saddening. And I actually do have another book that I just haven't read yet, which is um, The Earth is Weeping. I'm gonna read this. Uh, and one thing I think is really kind of daunting about this is when they talk about uh, the level of segregation within the tribes, I thought that was really, really depressing. And um, I hated to see that. Uh, but anyway, have a great afternoon.